Hey everyone, Romain here and we have had Melbourne as a race. Uh, it wasn't easy for me to follow Melbourne. I was big time time difference between California and Melbourne. Basically the race happened Saturday 10 p.m. local time in California. So it was a tough one, but I still managed to follow it. This year championship has been absolutely brilliant. I love the fight. I love to the unknown. I love the fact that um, you know sometimes team is doing really good and next race they're not doing really good. But who is doing really good at the minute? Ferrari. Ferrari very impressive. Charles Leclerc in Melbourne absolutely on another planet. Pole position, fastest lap, led every lap, won the race. Wasn't catchable. Very impressive from from Ferrari from Leclerc. A little bit more difficult for Sainz this weekend, but Charles Leclerc going for the title definitely taking a good option. 30 four points ahead of Russell. Russell with the Mercedes ending up P2 in the championship not with the fastest car. It shows that you need to finish the races to make sure that you've got a chance in the championship. So I'm really hopeful Ferrari can keep up the work, keep up the development. I can't wait to see what they can do in Imola. Home race for them. Big pressure. Everyone is going to be waiting for them. It's in two weeks. It's in Europe. There's going to be huge up upgrades on all the top teams. So let's see uh, if Ferrari can keep up the work biggest competitor Ferrari is Red Bull but to finish first first you need to finish Red Bull has had three DNF over the first three Grand Prix Verstappen fast not as fast as the Ferrari in Melbourne but didn't finish the race starts be a lot of points behind Leclerc for the championship we've got two different mentality different approach on the media it was quite funny to read that Christian Horner was saying uh, we'd rather have a fast car not reliable and George Russell with Mercedes on the other side saying oh you know it's, it's great to have a fast car but if you don't finish the race it's pointless it's quite funny to see See the difference of mentality i think they're both right but ideally you want a fast car that's reliable you also have to keep in mind is that red bull and mercedes fought to the end for the 2021 world championship so whilst ferrari was developing the 2022 car very early in the 21 season mercedes and red bull didn't have the luxury so all the resources were going towards fighting for the world championship whilst ferrari had made the gamble not a gamble but their choice to move on for 2022 and Right now it's paying it's paying off. They have the best car. At Mercedes, we've got Russell beating Hamilton. Maybe George coming from Williams is more used to have a car that he needs to fight that doesn't respond as well as he would like to what he demands. Whereas Lewis on the other side have had for seven, eight years the best car that was doing everything he wanted. It was driving it an amazingly well. But I feel like maybe George from, from Williams is as a little bit more the is a bit more used to, to fight the car, and that's why he's ahead. Hamilton hasn't been really lucky the last two races with the the safety car Jeddah and Melbourne so it'll be interesting but definitely very good job from George Russell second in the championship with a car that is third to fourth fastest so that's very impressive that's what they need to do right now they need to score points every time they can they need to take every opportunities that they can to make sure that uh, whilst they're preparing in the background and I tell you one thing they are preparing really hard on the background they upgrade and the solution I feel like in, in Imola they, they're going to bounce back I feel like they're going to be back in the game and seeing two Ferraris two Red Bull to Mercedes fighting for pole position win fastest lap that's going to be absolutely awesome Sebastian Vettel, Aston Martin, tough weekend, very tough weekend. You know, Aston Martin, the slowest car in Melbourne. Sebastian Vettel, issue in FP1, issue in FP2, issue in FP3, tough race. Just hasn't been, hasn't been great. It's hard to, it's hard to watch. I really like Sebastian and, and you know, it was so brilliant at Red Bull. It was so nice fighting with him for, for podiums back then. Then he did a really good job at Ferrari. Jump on the Aston Martin project as a new challenge. Had some really good races last year, but this year seems to be struggling a bit. So I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, Sebastian can get back to the level that we know he is at. Right now his, his body language is, is, is not happy and I really hope he's gonna be happy soon. He's a great guy that I really like and I really want to see him do well. McLaren coming back from nowhere. Uh, is it down to the track? Melbourne is definitely a racetrack that is different from the others. I can tell you with the Haas, we were always very competitive in Melbourne, but, but nowhere really anywhere else. Was the track really good for McLaren? Have they made any progress? That's going to be interesting to follow. We know they have got issue with the brake cooling. Bahrain was probably the hardest at the beginning of the season and one of the hardest track for it. Melbourne is also known for a lot of brake issue. Saying that they removed one corner and they had 
and more straight line this year in Melbourne than in the past. So maybe that helped my client to cool down the brakes and not having too much issues, but definitely good to see them back. I love to see the midfield between Alpine, McLaren, Alpha Tauri, Haas. These great fights. There's really great fights that we never know who's going to come on top of the others. So I feel like, you know, there's, there's good battles there. It's going to be exciting for all season. Who is going to be doing the best update? Who is going to be working the best? Who is going to manage to get extract the maximum of their car? That's going to be really interesting to follow. Haas in Melbourne. I was mentioning that it's always been a really good track for Haas Melbourne, but this year it wasn't. They were struggling a little bit of weekend. They were on the back foot. They were on the back foot because they didn't have any spare parts. As a driver, that's very hard to drive when you know you don't have any spare part because if you have any shunt, then you may not take the race start. So it's always hard to drive under that limit and, and to be building your confidence whilst you know on the back of your head that there is issue with spare parts. So that certainly didn't help. They didn't have the pace that they have shown in the first two races. I do truly hope for Kevin that they find the pace back in Imola. It would be great to see him again fighting for good points. And I'll keep my, uh, my finger crossed for them. Uh, definitively going to keep an eye on, on them. In two weeks, Imola, next race, first one back in Europe. We're going to see a lot of upgrade on the cars. Who is going to get it right? Who is going to get it wrong? Who is going to make the biggest step? It's going to be super exciting to follow. Again, please make sure that you like, you comment, you ask me your questions, uh, you subscribe, and I'll see you for some more video very soon.